Hi, I'm Ben and that's MP. Two and a half years ago, we bought this huge ship and we went way in over our heads and started rebuilding it. The time has come to start painting her. However, weather is not on our side. I am going to do my best to get at least that primer layer on. In the meantime, MP is doing everything she can to get our engine roaring inside this boat. Stay tuned to see our journey to get this boat launched and travel the seas. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our journey. <laughs> Today is a Saturday because it is a super nice day and I don't want to waste it. It's super dry, sunny, no one's sanding around us which is amazing and I want to use this day to at least get a layer of primer on at least the starboard side of the hull. It's all, I don't know if you can see around, we've got some black kind of bin lining material taped all the way everywhere where it's uh, varnished so that I can just go over the compressor gun, the paint gun and just put a layer of primer on. I'm not going to go too much into it, I've never done this before. I'm just going to make sure I don't spray too much on or not enough, I don't want it to drip and so on, so I'd rather go over twice. What I do know is I want to go over once at least, it's grey, I'm pretty sure this is grey. I want to go over once at least so we can maybe see some dents, put some more fairing compound because it's, it's what we've been doing every day anyway. And then when that's done we can put the complete layer of uh, primer on and then start painting the hole. Uh, weekend, no one's standing, it's sunny, let's get to business. for coming on a Saturday and adding the first layer of the primer because it was a very beautiful sunny day and also because no one else around him was sanding or anything so that was great and also because now we're having a very wet week so we won't be able to do it for now we're gonna work on the engine and some other stuff so what the plan is now is to get a stainless piece where it's small over here and big over here and just I don't know I just got given those instructions and I hope I build it right. So at one end I'm going to just like cut slices, close it and weld it shut. However the other end has to be more of an oval. We don't have any proper tools for it but I've got a very big clamp here so I'm going to try and see if I can flatten this with just the, the clamps that we've been using on the boat. Logically, I thought the first step would be to just take a piece of plywood, place it down there and draw the beginnings and the ends, the outsides and the insides of all the components of that turbo and the other parts. And I brought that over onto here. We've already got this huge tube which we're going to use, which has been squished to the size I want. That's going to be the bit that goes here. And this is the bit that is going to have a hose connected that goes to the turbo. Now that I've managed to cut this tube how I wanted it, I have spot welded it and I've drawn a line around here so I can start cutting. So now I should be able to just pull it off and have a nice circle. So I'm going to cut this in here and then start working on the other side. This is now all spot welded in place. The cutting was a mess and a lot harder than I thought. This is the size of the output of the turbo. This is gonna go from this size 
to this side. So I'm gonna have to shrink this somehow. And I think by cutting lots of like triangles out of this, I can then hammer this closed and make it fit a lot smaller. So I'm gonna just cut bit by bit. It's gonna take a while and it's gonna take a while. And that's all I have to say about that. ago Elio and MP came to me as they were working in the engine to weld a specific piece that goes from narrow to wide as it's the outlet for the turbo so I said look I'll give it a go however I've only got a stick weld machine so I gave it a go lots and lots and lots of cuts were made and lots of adjustments were made and lots of welds over welds grinded welds and rewelds were made for it to become a piece that I like to call Frankenstein it's looking better than Frankenstein now because I've got a grinder to it but if you look at the back of it, it looks like it's been made by someone who's just learned to weld. But I can almost guarantee you that it's smoke proof, waterproof if you need to, but it's smoke proof, and that it can go on the engine. And I'm now making it pretty, I'm giving Frankenstein a makeover, and it's taking forever. But hey, it's functional and ugly. <laughs> What I have here in the engine room right now is a water hose. It could be something very boring because it's just a water hose. But what we are about to do is something very exciting. We're about to fill in all the water of the engine, the fresh water, of course. And I'm very excited and a bit nervous to see if everything we did, all the connections, if everything is going to work, if nothing is going to leak. Because what is happening? We're getting the engine ready for testing here inside the engine room. That has never happened since all the refit. We just tested it outside. So now we're gonna work on fresh water, then later on diesel, on oil, on salt water, and then vroom. <laughs> Okay. 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 So probably one of the connections came loose because we don't have water and I am with my dad on the phone on loudspeakers and he promised me that he didn't shut the tap so uh, I wasn't filming that Engine is filled with water and after some adjustments there are no leaks anymore so this can be checked from our list and we can celebrate this tiny victory, but still a victory. This pump over here is the one that removes the old oil from the carter, so we can put new one after. And it was not in a good shape, now we are reviving it, so I just need to put it together in selling place and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay.
the whole starboard side has got its primer on already excluding the transom and the starboard side of the rudder of course but the whole bow is finished including starboard bow sprit and the Hodaji Proa. Tomorrow is another day. I hope I can go over it quickly with a sanding paper and then go over with the PU paint, which will be very cool. It's final color. Final color and it'll be protected and we can just forget about it. Like, done. You know, one thing off the list, never to be done again until we lift the boat again. Can you guess what this pump is about just by the color? Because of our color scheme? So in case I ever forget, the colors really help me. It's red, which means it's lubricant oil. It's gonna come here, and this support we have over here, and it's the pump we're gonna use to empty the old oil from the carter out whenever we need to change it, just by pumping. It's a manual pump. So yeah, it's ready after some attention that it needed, ready to be installed. And if I need to empty, that's how it goes. But now it's empty already, so we cannot really test the function. Because now what we're gonna do is fill it back up. You ready? We're not gonna make a mess, you left it already. Rest on here. It's gonna make a mess. Okay, ready? Don't spill. I'm very focused. Oil's in. Time of truth. Well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see, and it's perfect. <laughs> well, it's good. Another step closer to starting this beast up. Can't wait. You see the gearbox has some red spots, so it means it needs oil. It's not the same oil that in the engine, it's a different one because of the thickness and some specifications, I don't really understand about oil, but this is the one that's recommended for the gearbox, so I just trust and I do it. It's time to fill this up. The tag here says 5 liters. This is 5 liters, so let's do the whole thing. Okay, every single drop of the 5 liters is now inside this. I'm curious to check the level because it came out dry like completely dry mm -hmm. it's I think a millimeter above I was expecting that because it was completely dry now it needs to you know flow a bit inside but this has oil the engine has oil the engine has water we're really really this close to starting what we need to work now is here on the turbo on the exhaust and then we can start it because I really don't want the smoke to stay inside so I don't want to test it until we can put all the smoke out and yeah another check of the list this entire starboard side is now covered in primer it's been sanded down lightly just so it's a rough surface for the PU paint to adhere to cohere anyway stick to I've no one in the shipyard is sanding. I've also told everyone around or as many people as possible that I'm gonna be sanding, uh, painting. So just for a second, try and keep the sanding down. Uh, yeah, this stuff should dry really fast in this temperature. So yeah, went from white to gray and now the next color is gonna be, we'll see. As usual, plans aren't going as planned. Friday, I put the black tarp on the port side, hoping it wouldn't rain too much and we could paint this week. However, look at the weather behind us and it hasn't stopped since yesterday, which was Sunday. Uh, I even chucked the white tarp over, hoping I could keep it dry a little bit in case we wanted to do some more sanding and stuff, but oh well, 
Rain it is this week, the entire week. So we're gonna do interior stuff. I hope we can get the table finished. We just need the leg for it, the leg of the table or two legs that raise it and drop it. For that, we just have to find the minimum size and the maximum, the minimum height and the maximum height. We're looking all over for those materials, how it fastens and stuff like that. So hopefully we can get that finished. Varnishing isn't ideal, but we'll see what happens with the weather. And we'll try and get a bunch of other stuff done inside the boat now because like you can see, we haven't chucked a tarp over there because rain does come through the side and we don't have any blinds or anything yet. So uh, this week is going to be one of those weeks where you just see what you can do until the rain stops. And then we can finish the roof here. This is all fed, as in the fiberglass has been fed. Now we need the fairing compound on top to just remove the little bubbles and then paint it. And we can move over to that roof. But yeah, this week, like I said, let's play by ear, see what happens day by day, what has to be done on the boat. Uh, we want to start electrics ASAP, however, we want to start electrics and finish electrics. We don't want to like start electrics, then move over to something else and come back. So until then, we'll fill up our schedule with other stuff. This part attaches to the turbo. Uh, the outlet of the exhaust fumes goes through here, up, over here and out that end to the exhaust pipe. Here there is an inlet of the salt water outlet that comes from the salt water cooling system in the boat, goes through here and out through the exhaust pipe again. The reason this kind of, uh, what's it? No, no, the name, such a simple name. Anyway, it goes up and down. It's so that the water doesn't return into the turbo. We're about to install this. It's been shortened on this end, just because for some reason it didn't fit in the place it used to fit and we didn't change anything there. Uh, so now I'm just giving it a clean with a steel brush on a drill so that later we can have it wrapped up again properly and attach it to the engine. Let's go. This is in place now. We've just fastened it with a few nuts and uh, washers. It has been lowered, so this bit has been cut seven centimeters lower so it fits under the roof beams, but not only that, or the deck beams, but it gives it a little space. It is gonna be isolated, so we should even be able to touch this with bare hands. And uh, soon we can work from here aft to the exhaust system. This here is one of the mysteries that we will never understand. We don't know what happened. This is the original exhaust of Yaba. And when we brought it back to the boat, it just wouldn't fit here on the ceiling of the engine room. And we don't know, of course we did put new cushions and the engine might be sitting a bit higher, but the difference was so big that it will remain as a mystery because we couldn't figure it out. But anyway, we got it cut, rewelded. now it has a good size because we wanted to leave some space here. Also something else that we did to the exhaust is that before it was covered in asbestos, I believe that's how you say it, which is a material that really shouldn't be used nowadays anymore because it's very bad for our health. So we decided to remove it. But of course the pipe cannot stay exposed like this because this gets really hot so we need to figure out another material to protect the pipe. If you have any material in mind that you can suggest us, please let us know in the comments because we're trying to find that. It cannot be something that catches on fire, it has to be very isolating for temperature but it cannot harm our health. So now we have a naked pipe but at least it's in place and it's fitting nicely and the best part about it is that now we are almost ready to test the engine. We just need to find the hose that comes here, put the smoke out, and then we can test our engine. I really cannot wait to see if all the effort we have put together with Elio will pay off. I believe it will, or I hope it will, but there's only one way to find out. Before saying bye, we would like to thank and welcome our new patron, Bry, and also thank the donation through PayPal from Dave and Brenda, and also all the super thanks we got this week from James, Michael, Duane, Wiley, Joseph, James, Laurie, Jens, Veteran Mike, Thomas, and Jay Davis. Thank you so much for supporting our journey, and we we'll see you all next week when we test our engine. Bye!